Imagine getting everything you want, wouldn't it be nice? Now imagine everyone getting everything that they've been wishing for. What would happen? Well, there would be chaos. Like, what if a person's wish contradicts the person's? But really, what would happen if you get everything that you want? Would you be bored? Or would you commit suicide? Since you now have everything and you can't find anything meaningful in your life. Or would you be happy? Can our desire bring happiness? In some sense, our desires managed to make our life easier since we came into being. Imagine the followers of the Buddhist doctrine. They think the highest ideal of life is placid serenity. They subsist on a handful of lentils, with no more clothing than a loincloth, and a woven with a hut or shelter, and they find glory in that. But cultured civilizations have not been advanced by such people. Our desire for knowledge got us here. The desire sent explorers off on dangerous voyages into the unknown. That's how America discovered how we managed to feed ourselves despite the growing population, and how we got the internet. Our desires also seem to have increased. Just look at the difference between now and 20 years or 40 years ago. What you eat for breakfast today can be considered a luxury by the people of the past. It seems that day by day, we keep improving. We have a future only in so far as we have desires. But what if someday we reach the point of our technological capacity? The point where we can no longer improve upon and age beyond the technological singularity. Well, maybe that is slowly coming to fruition. The Moore's Law is already slowing down and if there's no replacement for silicon-based computing, our technological progress as we know it could be stopped dead in its tracks. But I doubt this will happen though since it's only a matter of time until we found a new replacement. Also, it's hard to predict the future and the ancient people have been trying ever since. The ancient Greeks asked for advice from Pythia, the oracle of Delphi. The ancient Chinese used crack bones to make predictions. And Nostradamus of the 16th century tried to forecast future events. During the early 1900s, physics was thought to be complete that nothing else would ever be discovered. But just as we thought that would happen, we discovered relativity and quantum mechanics. But now, it's getting harder to stumble upon a new discovery since physics is getting more abstract. Does that mean that we're reaching the limitations of the human mind? Maybe that will happen, maybe it won't. We humans are always creating solutions to our problems. But every time we've got a solution, we create new problems. Karl Marx hated capitalism because the system exploits vulnerable people and it feeds greed. So he created an idea called socialism. But when the socialist revolution happened, it created a whole other set of problems. When Mao Zedong of the Chinese Communist Party launched the Great Leap Forward, he created one of the worst man-made famines in our history, leaving 15 to 55 million people dead. Joseph Stalin, the former ruler of the Soviet Union, starved a lot of Ukrainians when he wanted to create a communist economy, just like Zidong. Ukrainian peasants were so desperate they killed and ate pets, consumed flowers, and tree bark. One woman who found some dried beans was so hungry she ate them on the spot without cooking them and then reportedly died when they expanded in her stomach. As you can see, ideologies can be deadly and devastating, but who could blame Marx? He just felt bad for the people under the capitalist system, and he didn't provide a blueprint for constructing a socialist state. Most of his writings are just a critic of capitalism, and most of the socialist future is described in vague terms. In some religions, desires are not desirable. For example, the second noble truth in Buddhism states that desiring is the cause of all suffering, although a desire for God is usually encouraged in various doctrines. In philosophy, desire is also seen as a problem. Plato argues that individual desires must be postponed for higher ideals. Baruch Spinoza saw natural desires as a form of bondage since we don't choose them using our own free will. Sigmund Freud proposed the Oedipus Complex to argue that people desire incest and must repress that desire. And he thinks that this is a universal experience, which I don't think so because I have no desire to marry my mother. Anyway, the claim that this complex is universal has been disputed a long time ago since there is no credible evidence to suggest that this is a universal experience. I guess it tells more about Freud than humanity in general. As a boy, he wanted to marry his mother and sees his father as a rival for her love. I mean, that's how it got its name, Oedipus, Greek mythology a man that kills his father and ends up marrying his mother. So since desire can cause humans to become embittered and obsessed, 
just like Freud obsessing over his mother, that is sees his father as a rival, it is seen as one of the causes of woe for mankind. But the consequences of desire go back to how we handle desire. Some of our desires are weirder than others, but we usually strive for pleasure since we're generally hedonist, and one of the common ways to satisfy your needs is with money. So, are the richest people in the world happy? They seem to get the things that they want since it's easy for them. Elon Musk has described himself as medium happy, and Jeff Bezos states that if he's happy at work, he would come home with tremendous energy. But these people aren't perfect. Musk offered to give his money to end world hunger, but the World Food Program still hasn't received any money. But it is believed that the money still goes to charity, but we just don't know which one. Even if they're able to do the things they want, that doesn't mean they're happy. Bill Gates reinvented toilets, tries to eradicate polio using vaccines, and tries to push for global health advancement, but he faced lots of obstacles. Some volunteers died when giving the vaccines since they were killed by terrorists, because somehow some religious leaders think that vaccines are a plot by the West to sterilize kids or whatever, but Bill is still pushing through it. I guess it brings Gates a lot of frustrations. Other billionaires also have desires they can fulfill. Some of these billionaires are investing in research in aging so they could live a longer life, but they're still getting older and they can't terraform Mars like they expected they could. I guess the soon-to-be Mars Emperor is quite frustrated too. Consumerism is also a form of desire. People desire material goods. They want a new iPhone, Tesla, or whatever that seems trendy or cool. Some have died because of this, like in some Black Friday stampede or shooting. In art, we can see desires too. In dramas or novels, we can see romance, the conflict between social classes, and the crisis in human emotions. But if you look at the bigger picture, as humans, as a species, what do we exactly want? Well, we actually have a lot of common desires, like food, shelter, and clothing. However, we also contradict each other a lot. Some people want this, and some other people want that. Is it possible that we want the same thing, but uses different means to achieve it? Generally, I think humans want to be happy. I want to be happy, you want to be happy. Even though we have the occasional urge to listen to sad song and revel inside the paradise of sadness, but we still want to be happy. So if you look at the people of the Abrahamic religion, they want to go to heaven, and they want to do good things, and they believe that they are doing good things, and mostly, they are, but there are other groups. Radicalized groups that take this to the extreme, those that are called fundamentalist. It's a form of religion, especially Islam or Protestant Christianity that believes in the literal interpretation of scripture, and they can be quite extreme and scary. The Ku Klux Klan is a right-wing terrorist group that is mostly made by the Protestant Christian community, and it's ironic how they're committing one of the seven deadly sins, which is wrath, and the Al-Qaeda well, they crash into the World Trade Center. What are those people gonna do? And many parts of the Middle East are in shambles, partly because of these extreme ideologies. It's a shame, really how the cradle of great civilizations is now ruined by these extreme ideologies. But it's hard to pinpoint what humanity wants since we have different desires. Conservatives want different things than liberals, some people oppose technological innovations while some embrace them. And desires can differ between places and people. In poorer places, people are usually fixated on the thoughts of finding food, where to live and surviving, whereas in the wealthier places, they're concerned about how bad their haircut is or what gender they're going to be perceived as. Hell, some desires are so strong that we would soon have an Emperor of Mars since someone with a lot of power wanted to turn from Mars and live there. Not that it's bad though. It's good to try to achieve to be an interplanetary species since we can't live on Earth forever. Sooner or later, the sun would expand and everything on Earth would die. So, it's inevitable for the human race to leave the Earth given that we don't kill ourselves in the whole process of being the type on civilization. But in order to do that, we have to learn more about the universe and think about what we truly should do. We have to be united and think as a species. We should find a common ground, 
a common desire, if you will, and that is, we all want to survive. We could live in harmony. If humans live all those primitive desires, we would have been living a better life. So yeah, we don't know if we'll ever reach the point of highly advanced technological innovations that are perfect. We may won't be able to go back in time, or to other universes, or even reach the border of the universe. But just like the nine physicists that thought physics was ending in the early 1900s, a new discovery might be on our way that would knock our socks off, that would revolutionize how we see the world. Or not. But until then, we'll never know. Thank you.